going to be talking to you about how you can achieve your goals and dreams. I am sharing this particularly because for so many years there have been a number of goals, there have been a number of dreams, a number of desires and targets and objectives that I set for myself and I failed to achieve. And as I started to study myself and started to review a lot of the actions that I took, I reviewed my attitude, I reviewed my feelings, I reviewed um, some of my associations, I came down to one conclusion that, and I think this is, in my opinion, as of this present time, is one of the corner requirements that you must understand if you want to really be successful. And that's success in any area of life, you know, good health, happiness, joy, love, financial wealth, prosperity, good fortune. In any area of life, you must begin with this concept. Now, this concept I'm going to be talking about is a simple concept called your self-image. Now, I want to talk about your self-image in relation to success. But more importantly, I want to give you um, what I consider to be a, a six-step process. It's, you know, I might give you an extra one. Um, to make it seven, but it's just a series of steps that I want you to just consider this and try it. Over the last few um, years, I have studied success. I've spent a lot of my time studying. I've been studying a lot of really successful people um, because I came to the conclusion that a lot of what I had done in the past had not created the level of success that I wanted. And I want to invite you to try the same thing. Now, if you're listening to me, I want you to ask yourself a simple question. The results that I have in my life today, are they consistent with my ultimate desires? In other words, am I where I want and I would have wanted to be? Now, if your answer is no, then it means that the actions, the thoughts, the feelings from your past has not been sufficient to create the picture you have in your imagination for the future. And you are not in your future yet because you haven't qualified to be there. So the knowledge, the wisdom that you have, you've applied in the past, have only, has only got you to where you are right now. To get to the future that you see in your imagination, to get to the future that you want, you have to gather new knowledge. And therefore, I want you to be open to some of these ideas. I don't want you to simply accept the ideas and use them. I want you to just ask yourself one simple question as I should listen to me. The question is this, can this information help me move towards my goals and dreams? If the answer is yes, then I want you to try it. Um, you have nothing to lose. If the answer is no, then of course you can discard it. Forget it. Now, what I'm talking about is self-image. We all have a self-image. I'll say that again. Every one of us has a self-image. Interestingly, we weren't born with a complete self-image. We came into the world with what, what I would call an empty reservoir. Empty. So the image we have of ourselves is inherited. It's inherited as a result of the environment we were raised in, the relationships we had around us, the people, the associations, the events that have happened in our lives as we've traveled, as we've grown, as we've lived, is from the goals we have and the dreams we have. All of these have influenced your self-image. As a matter of fact, as a young child, you haven't developed your, what we call your inductive and deductive way of reasoning, meaning there are certain things you can reject. A young baby, if I was to give a young baby a piece of stone and I say, put it in your mouth, the baby will put the stone in his or her mouth. And if I say swallow, the baby will try and swallow because the baby cannot tell the difference between good and bad. At the young age, the baby has a self-image that is starting to formulate as a result of environment, association, people, events. But as that baby grows and gets to an age, perhaps as a teenager, now the baby starts to learn what is good and what is not too good. The problem we have is that a lot of us, unfortunately, although we inherit our self-image, we accept it completely. 
And we never go back and question that self-image. Question whether that is actually consistent with who we want to be. You know, you've heard so many people say things such as, I'm always late, that's who I am. But that's not who you are. You're much smarter than that. You might hear some people say things such as, I've never been good in maths, I've never been good in sciences, I'm not really that smart, I'm not very creative. That's all false. Now, your results of the past might be a way of perhaps you saying, the results I've obtained shows that I'm not. But that's your past. Your past has come, it's gone. You've paid a price for it, you can walk away from your past. The future, on the other hand, is yet to come. You can choose who you want to be. As a matter of fact, you have a potential that is unlimited. But most of us go through life and we say, well, that's just who I am. This is just who I am. We've accepted this image. Now, what I want to talk to you about is if you want to be successful in any area of life, you've got to change that image. I'll give you a good example. I remember kind of growing, growing up um, relationally. There were certain things that I did both in intimate relationships, business relationships, and just general friendships. There were certain things that I did. I would say, well, these are my rules. You know, this is who I am. I can't change. Well, of course I can change. You know, I, I'm not a tree. I don't have to stay fixed in a location. Uh, you know, I'm not a, you know, goose. A goose must always fly south in the winter because they only operate by instincts. But we have the power of choice. We can choose. You can change your life. You can decide, well, I haven't been a very nice person. I want to become a really nice and lovely person by choice. But all of us, at some point in our life, we've accepted the image that we have. Now, to change your life and achieve what you want, you've got to start again by going back and asking yourself a simple question. Is this picture that I have of me consistent with who I want to be? Now, you've probably heard this, be, do, have. To have more, you've got to do more. But to do more, you've got to be more. But most people don't understand that the be more means become. You have to become. Now, the becoming is what people refer to as, you have to be, be, be new in your mind. Meaning... I love what Paul said. He says, um, be not be, do not be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewal of your mind. Meaning, you must go back and renew your self-image because your self-image dictates your results. Now, in any area of your life, this is so exciting, this is so powerful, and I, I'm excited about it because... This was like a, what I would call an aha moment, um, the eureka moment, a moment where like a, a, a key med is uh, some time back I, I heard and I read that he was having a shower, he was in a bath and he just screamed out eureka, I found it and he dashed out from one part of his house naked running to the other side of his house where his um, workshop was. He had suddenly arrived at a place of awareness, understanding, knowing, where suddenly the thoughts clicked. Something he had been working on for such a long time, he came to understand why and how it would work. Now, all of us need to get to that place where we say, I understand. I'm aware of it now. To change your self-image, you must renew continuously that image. But guess what? You cannot renew an image that is false. So one of the questions I want to ask you to do is ask yourself a simple question. What image do I have about myself? And that's a deep question. But I want to share with you something that, I, that is, is changing uh, my life. And I'm going to give you some of the things I'm doing on a daily basis um, in every area of my life. And I can see great results. It's very difficult. It's challenging because it's very, um, it's uncomfortable because it's new, but it's creating great results. And here is my view. Imagine that you had a blank canvas. 
Just imagine this, for example, I've been writing on this board and it's got a lot of things on the board, but imagine that you had this blank canvas and it was as blank as what we have now on this board with the exception of this um, writing. If you were given a blank canvas and you were asked to paint your ideal painting, how beautiful a painting would you paint? Would you do it alone? That's a simple question. Would you do it alone? Now, most people would say yes, but guess what? All of us have not been trained. We haven't sat under the feet of a great painter, a master to learn. And therefore, one of the things we have to do is associate. Now, I would imagine that if you were given a blank canvas and you were told, listen, you can create any picture you want and you can have anyone you want in your team. I would imagine that some of you might want to invite the likes of Picasso or Michelangelo um, or, you know, or Rembrandt to be in your corner. Someone who can stand back and give you directions on how to paint this classic image of yourself. And that is how you change your self-image. You don't change your self-image by renewing the old image you have. You change your self-image by redesigning the new image you want. And you begin simply by asking yourself this simple question, what do I want? If I had a choice to live a life, a perfect life, a beautiful life, a loving, caring, a successful, wealthy life, what would that be? What would that look like? So the first thing you want to do if you want to create your self-image, and this is what I suggest you do in every area of your life, I'm going to give you the steps and then I'm going to share with you how you can apply this to the various categories of, of improvement in your life. The first thing you want to do is create. Now this create means fantasize. Fantasize. Dream. Imagine. simple. Imagine that life you want. To do this, most of you may not really know where to start. And here is my best recommendation. Think about other successful people who have achieved a level of success in that area and use their examples. So use them as examples. Don't copy their lives, but copy their level of achievement. So you might say, I want to be a loving person. I want to be fit and I want to be healthy. You might say, I want to be wealthy and I want to be kind and giving. You might say, I want to be, you know, in a really, really, really successful business. I want to be the CEO. But create. Start with creation. You create the new self-image using pictures. So you create pictures. Now, when we think, we think in pictures. This is very important. Most people talk about goals and they say, write your goals now. Now, when you write your goals down, what it does is it, it helps you remember those goals. But guess what? A thought in your mind must be in pictures. That is how you remember things, in pictures. So what you want to do is create a picture of the new you. It has to be a perfect picture. And this picture is not one that you create once. You can keep going back and modifying and changing and keep improving but create a picture of what you want. Number two, and this is where we move into the steps. When you've created a picture of the new self-image you have, now the first thing you must do is what we say create mental movies. So take this picture and convert it into a motion picture, a movie. How? See yourself in the future, doing what you want to do, having what you want to have, experiencing that life, living that life. Mental rehearsal is important. Now, I'm going to list all of them out and then we'll go through them one after the other. The next thing you want to do is you want to do what we call mental rehearsal. This is a mental movie. This is a rehearsal. Forgive my spelling if it's wrong. Mental rehearsal. The next thing you want to do is goals. 
review and rewrite your goals. The next thing you need is affirmations. Now this is so powerful. Affirmations of the new you. The next thing you want to do after your affirmations is you want to be in a position whereby you take actions. And actions comes in two parts. There is positive actions towards your goals and then there is feedback actions or what we call corrective actions towards your goal. And number seven is you want to review your progress. Now this is this is a lot for you to take in, but I think it can change your life. Now I want to talk about the various aspects of each of what I've given you and how this works um, in practice. Because what I'm giving you here is theory. This is just theoretical, um, but it's important you know the steps. Then we can talk about the actions. We we'll talked about create. That's easy. How do you do that? Close your eyes and dream. Imagine. Find somewhere quiet. Perhaps as soon as you wake up in the morning. Perhaps before you go to bed. Find so somewhere quiet. And just allow your mind to just... Allow your body to be relaxed first. Allow your mind to get into a state where it's calm. And then just allow those pictures to flow into your mind. And fantasize like you used to do when you were a child. You know, see yourself being, doing, and having what you want. Create a picture of the future you want. In that picture, see yourself, smell the air, look around, see all the various people you're going to be maybe socializing with in that future. Taste something, maybe a drink in that future. Smell the air. Um, hear sounds of what's going on around you. What you're doing with that picture is the more you're using those, what do we call your natural senses and your imagination, which is your higher faculty, you're allowing yourself to get emotionally involved with that idea. And that is where the creation starts from. Mental movies is very simple. If you've ever been to a cinema, then you know the kind of principle of creating or going to a movie. Now, when you've created the picture, the second stage is to see yourself in that picture. I'll give you a good example. Um, some people might say, I want to, I've been thinking about a car. I want a car. I have a, a desire for a car. Unfortunately, they don't, they see the car in their mind, but what they see is the car. You see, that is not complete. What they don't see is themselves in the car, owning the car, driving the car. So you must see yourself. And that's the reason why we take you to the next stage of a, of a movie. Because think about this. Um, to move from the creation to the next stage, imagine yourself going to a, a movie. Imagine yourself walking into this dark screen room. As you walk down, there is only one chair, one seat. It's for you. Imagine yourself sitting in that seat, the room is dark, the TV comes on, and the motion picture that is playing is you. But not you in the present, it's your life in the future, based on what you've created. You watch yourself interacting and having fun and being happy and joyful and um, healthy in the future. What you're doing is you're seeing that self-image. You're, this is how you're, you're building your self-image now. Once you've allowed yourself to create that mental movie and you're watching those movies, what you find is you're getting emotions and feelings associated with that new self-image. But you don't stop there. You move down to the next, which is you must what, apply what we call mental rehearsal. Now, mental rehearsal is the action, but it's not action in terms of physical action is action in your mind meaning now you've sat back and you've seen the future you have to now see yourself in the future taking action so i'll give you a good example let's assume perhaps you are 
um, a bodybuilder, for example, and you're practicing or preparing for a competition, you have a goal. Your goal is perhaps to become, let's say in this example, Mr. Olympia, for example, and you've been training really hard. Now, the mental movies is where you see yourself maybe six, seven months down the line, maybe a day or two before the competition. You see yourself perhaps in the gym, doing your final, maybe posing, doing your final workouts. You also see yourself maybe walking on stage, collecting the trophy, giving your speech. That is you doing what we call um, mental rehearsal. You're starting to allow yourself acts. So now you're not watching yourself. You're now living, you're now doing what you want in the future. Now, once you've done that, now you've already established a goal. What you have to do is review your goals and rewrite these goals every day. So what is your goal? You've defined what you want. You've seen yourself in your mental movie. You've rehearsed it. Convert that into written form. Convert that into a goal. And people might say things like that. Um, I want to achieve my goal of winning the Mr. Olympia competition in six months. But that's not a good enough goal now because you already have created a picture. You've got to change that. So you're saying, I am. I am the Mr. Olympia champion for this particular year. And you say, bye, you put the date. So you must use the word I am. You must affirm it as though it's already achieved. It's just a matter of time. Now, this goal, you must review them every day and rewrite it. Meaning, wake up in the morning, sit down with a blank piece of paper and write your goals down. Keep writing it down. Keep rewriting it down. You might say, I'm a loving husband of two children and I spend good quality time with my kids every single day and I'm developing more intimacy with them. You write, just keep writing your goals down every day. The more you rewrite it, the more it's reaffirmed. The more you rewrite your goals, the more you apply what Paul said, be renewed, be renewed in your mind. Because there is so much negativity that comes to you that might distract you from what you want. Now, once you've done that, one of the things I found that was powerful is uh, affirmations. Um, unfortunately, most people affirm what they don't want. In this case, I want you to learn how to affirm what you want. And that's done very simply, but also in a very easy way. How? Think about this. What would you want people to say to you? You see, self-talk, I believe, self-talk is you saying to yourself what you would have wished other people would say to you. But you don't have to wait for other people to come tell you how great you are. Why don't you tell yourself how great you are? So affirmations is simply you now. When you started to develop this self-image, make it in words. And actually let it be words such that you can repeat those words to yourself as you, as you move around, as you move, go around. Repeat those words to yourself. Affirm yourself. Do this regularly. You might say, for example, um, I can do all things. I can do all things. I'm a healthy, happy, loving mother. I'm a grateful, giving, caring person. You can say I'm perhaps the, the, the 2000 and whatever year that might be, I'm champion bodybuilding, but affirm yourself. Keep affirming yourself. You've got to learn what I call the art of self-talk. And you should never, never, now you've heard people say this, and I didn't learn this um, early enough, but I used to be one of those who I would say, I'm always late, or uh, I'm never good at things like that, or I'm, uh, sometimes I can be very clumsy. The one person you should never negatively affirm is yourself. Everyone else is saying negative things about you. Don't join that class of people. You should be speaking positive things about you. So the only thing you want to affirm is something good, something noble, something that is great. So develop affirmations of you based on this new self-image and repeat those affirmations on a daily basis. This then will allow you to move to number six, which is about taking action. And this is where everything is created. You see, by thought, what you want is created. By expectation, is sent to you. By action, you receive it. Action is where everything comes together. This simply means you apply a principle called you act as though it were impossible to fail. 
you act as though what you want is already real. You start behaving. Someone called it, tell yourself a true lie and act on that lie. So you're dealing with the future. You've created an image of what you want, but you don't have to wait for the future. Start living that future now. And by living that future now and acting like, like you want to become, what you find is that you push yourself into that future very quickly. So action is important. You must act. Now you've created a self-image. Start acting like that person you want to be. Now, action comes in two parts. The positive action I've talked about. The second action is the feedback action, meaning when you start acting like that person you want to be, you have to keep going back to your mind, replaying that picture of who you want to be, and ask yourself, am I consistently acting in accordance with that person? You'll get some feedback because it will seem uncomfortable because it's not, it wouldn't feel natural or real. The feedback you get, you have to apply what we call corrective action, which is, okay, how do I correct? Correct. Keep correcting until your activities are almost picture perfect with what you have in your mind. Now, the final thing you have to do is review your progress. And this comes with being grateful. Gratitude is simply you recognizing what you have, recognizing the good around you. So review the progress you've made, but also be happy for what you have. Six steps. Now, here's the most important part of the entire process. Repetition is the first key or the first stage of learning. And in my opinion, some people say it's the architect of change. You must repeat, repeat, repeat. Now, how can you do this? Daily. And I'll recommend you do something that I've started doing lately, which is allocate five minutes to each of these stages. Now, some of them you wouldn't have to do um, first thing in the morning, for example. The creating of the picture, you may not really have um, to invest five minutes every day because you've created a picture. You can simply improve on the picture. And that might simply mean, you know, perhaps you um, spend in maybe an hour, two hours um, over a month, an entire month, just going back and saying, um, am I happy with who I am developing into? And can I add more? Just keep adding more, making yourself better, keep growing. But spend five minutes every day on your mental movies. Find somewhere quiet, sit down, imagine yourself in a room. It's a black, dark room. Picture comes on, a motion picture, and is your future. Spend five minutes doing your mental rehearsals where you replay in your mind and you keep seeing yourself living and doing and taking actions and doing what you want to do in the future. Review your goals. But all of these you want to do first thing in the morning. And this is very important. If you can do this first thing in the morning, and you can do this in the evening before you go to bed, what you find is very quickly in a space of 30 days, this new self-image will become so filled in your heart. You'll become, you'll, you'll become almost, I wouldn't use the word obsessed, but there'll be a level of knowing in you that you've changed. And as you act on that new self-image, what you find is you start to attract into your life the good that you deserve and that you want. Now, I hope that's been useful. God bless.